Good afternoon, Internet. So today I have a plan. My plan is to finally tune the Z axis. So I've got out here kind of what we're going to do. Um, for those that are wondering, tune Z axis. Uh, my other video is there, maybe, or there. I, I don't, I'll put the card somewhere on here. That covers tuning the X and the Y axis. We're going to tune the Z axis now. So when I say tuning, what I basically mean is making sure that what the computer thinks is a certain distance in, in space matches the real world distance in space, or as close as we can get. So follow along while we tune the Z axis using gauge blocks and a surface plate. The dreaded whiteboard. You guys have been here before. It's where I dribble on about stuff. And, and as you can see, this is the, the old tuning video mess, which shows you how often I use this whiteboard, except when I'm talking to you guys on here. So let's go ahead and just trash this and start with the new one now. All right, ladies and gents, Plan Z. All right, first let's talk about the failings of the original Plan C. What hung me up last time when we, didn't, when we did the gauge box and the X and Y is I was trying to somehow touch off a low point and then touch off a high point. And the idea was I needed to somehow get these get two gauge blocks and get them together and then have some surface that was flat enough that I could travel this distance and on the y-axis and I'd be coplanar and so I could measure this distance here. Uh, it's all fine and dandy except for the CNC is motors bigger than this spot. So that was the original plan Z. Trashed it, never ended up doing it. Um, so what am I doing in the new Plan Z? Well, I've got myself, had it for a while. I use it for tramming my CNC machine in. I have a three inch sharpening stone. Now this thing is incredibly flat. It's granite. It's like three inch by 24. For those in metric land, I'm sorry, I'm using uh, Imperial numbers by 18. So yeah, that's pretty big. And it is very, very, very flat. It's um, it's a sharpening stone. It's not uh, it's not a sandstone for sharpening. It is a it is a surface that you tape like uh, sanding material to, and then you sharpen things that need to be very, very flat when they're sharpened, like chisels and, and whatnot. So for hand sharpening, very, very sharp things. It's a granite surface plate that you then use. It's very, very flat. It's within hundredths of a thousandths of an inch. It's not metrology flat. It is definitely woodworking flat and probably could be tuned to metrology flat um, if I were to pay to get it certified. It was, again, you know, hundreds of a thousandths or even might have even been millionths off as far as flatness was concerned. It was shockingly flat. A link in the description if you decide you want a poor man's surfacing plate like this. By all means, uh, you know, I think if you're not doing hardcore metrology and your tolerances are acceptable, it might be a hundred dollar way to have a metrology surface than versus the much more expensive ones that are out there. Um, and it did come with the spec sheet for those that are curious. So you can, I can actually give you the spec sheet. Um, comments below if you want a spec sheet. All right, so what, what are we doing with that? So there's, there's four steps to the process. Now we have a very flat surface, look on a lovely flat surface. Um, one, two, three, four. All right, step one, we're gonna take a gauge block. In this case, it's gonna be 0. 0.7500. And we're gonna to touch off from that gauge block, right? And so once we do that, we know that we know that we are very we know we, we we know where this point is in real space and that's awesome so then we're gonna drop it down so that it's at just 0 0.001 from the surface and we want to do that because we want to get as much throw as possible we're testing throw distance right so we want to we want to we want to compound as much error as possible in this measurement Step three, we'll take the, the bit and we'll move it up to our testing height, and that's gonna be 4.1 inches. And then four, we will do a touch off. We'll do the Z probe measurement in, um, in Mach four of four inches. So this distance will be four inches. Now, because we're testing a four inch measurement, 
will get a throw test of 3.999. It's important to remember that because that's the number we need to use when we're doing our calculations of motion. motion and whenever, whatever measurement comes out of here, we need to subtract a thousandth from it because we're starting a thousandth off. So 3.999 is what we're actually moving distance wise and, and we're doing it, whatever measurement we get, we need to subtract a thousandth from it because that's what it thinks it moved again. So why, what's the equation we're gonna use? If you, if you don't remember this equation, let's go over it again real quick. It is virtual distance, that's whatever Mach 3 thinks, Mach 4, controller, DRO measurement over actual distance. That's your that's your gauge block, right? Times your your currently configured steps. However many steps per unit you have configured, that's this times this equals your new step config. And then what you're gonna do is test. Based on that result, you're gonna come back around. And you're gonna iterate this until you're happy. Or in my case, I'm gonna iterate it until I'm happy. Um, for me, I'm gonna have a target of 0 .0005. Um, if I'm off by half a thou, uh, over four inches, given what I cut regularly, given that I only have an eight-inch throw, uh, that's in, that's that's more than I'm happy with that accuracy. That's that's plenty plenty good accuracy for me. I got way more problems than half a thou on my z-axis. Uh, uh, the bits I'm using, um, the fact that I'm using wood, the fact that my surf my my spool board can flex because it's MDF, even though there's ribs, it can still flex. There's there's plenty of things that can go wrong. That half a thousandth on my z-axis is well within any margin uh, that I can accept. All right, so here we are. We are uh, going ahead and zooming into the touch plate. This is gonna be something you're gonna see us do a lot. Now, uh, after we zero against the touch plate, we are now pretty sure we're at three quarters of an inch, so we drop down to a thousandth over. And again, we're trying to stack as much air as possible, so we wanna drop to a thousandth, then we're gonna jump up to 4.1 inches. Sorry, uh, people, I'm using Imperial slash American Standard instead of standard units. Um, eventually, I'll get to standard units someday. Uh, first test comes out, and we see that we're, we're off by, uh, so you have to subtract a thousandth from that, so we're really off by about um, uh, 11 thousandths, about a hundredth of an inch, over four inches, which is not great. It's not horrible, all things considered. hundredth of an inch is not, not bad, but we can fix that. We can do better. Um, so let's go ahead, and this is first iteration. We find that we're off by a little, little under uh, three, three tenths of a percent. We could, we can do better than that. So uh, we have our scaling factor. Let's go ahead and multiply our steps by our scaling factor. Uh, once we get the that new number, uh, we will go ahead and plug that into Mach four. And once we plug that into Mach four, we can enable Mach four and off to the races to test again. So again, we always, because our steps are changing, we always have to zero against that known that known distance of uh, three quarters of an inch, um, that, that gauge block. So, uh, you know, I could zero against the base if the base were metal, but um, I have MDF base and the, the surface plate is a much better choice for being precise as far as what is flat. So once we're, we've done our all the way down, we've gone back all the way up, we just get our next test going. Um, here we are dropping our gauge block in for probing test number two. I have to say I really like the probing features in Mach 4. I'm sure they're rudimentary, but they're more than adequate. And we find that we're not too bad. We're off by two, two thousandths of an inch. Um, two thousandths of an inch is not all that bad, all things considered. But we, I don't know, you, you've heard me say this already, we can do better. So there's our new scaling factor. We're off by an incredibly small six hundredths of a percent. Uh, but, you know, that's a scaling factor and w the test isn't that hard to do, so let's do the math, let's run the test. So uh, let's get our new number. Um, pretty small change, all things considered, being applied. And we'll run the new test. Let's see how the new test goes. Again, uh, always zeroing against our gauge block to find, to find real space, um, three quarters of an inch to zero, which really 
just so that we can zero so we can drop down to the bottom. Um, and we'll go ahead and do, drop to the bottom, then jump to the top. It's almost like a dance, right? Like I, I could probably have turned this into a macro, all things considered. Maybe since you only have to do this every so often, like once, um, probably not worth turning into a macro. Uh, here we are, and we're going to run this bounce once, bounce twice, and the results come in, and we're off by three tenths. Three tenths is a pretty respectable number to be off by. We'll test it twice. Um, again, three tenths. And so really, we're good. We're good. We're within our half a thou. So let's test this sucker with um, a two inch block. So let's see how we do it two inches and we'll see how we do it three inches. At two inches, let's see what the results come in. And uh, we don't have to zero off anything because we haven't changed any steps. So bounce one, bounce two, and the results come back and we're eh, not perfect, six tenths, but still within. I mean, average is, is actually four tenths right now, roughly. Um, now let's test three inches. Bounce one, bounce two, and we'll see how we did. And at four inches, we come back at three tenths again. So we were definitely averaging that half. Right on, so that went okay. All things considered, we got our target number, half a thou. We're actually less than half a thou. Um, we tested multiple sizes and that went well. We were able to, uh, to test the four inch, that went well. The three inch and the two inch. On all of those sizes, we were given within a half a thou, which is well within range. I think, I think I have like some backlash issues going on and I won't be able to resolve those probably until uh, Ethernet Smooth Stepper releases uh, backlash support for Mach 4. Um, anyways, for those that are wondering what I'm holding my hands, I have stickers now. Uh, link in the description if you want stickers. Uh, you know, I'm going to sell them on my website or somewhere. I don't know yet. I'm going to post this after I figure that out. Um, as always, please subscribe, comment, like, don't like if you hate it, um, and click the notify button. And uh, real quick, before I run off, let's start a comments discussion. What kind of videos do you guys like? So I'm going to ask this question because I do a lot of longer format videos and the vibe on Facebook is, oh, your video should be like five, 10 minutes tops. Well, I, I do a lot of 30 minute videos. So, you know, what I'm going to ask you guys, the uh, 300 ish of you guys that have decided to subscribe to me. Do you like my 30 minute videos? Do you wish the content was shorter? Do you wish the content was longer? Would you prefer I break them up? Let's, you know, you're my audience. This is, I'm doing this for you guys while I'm doing it for me because I think it's fun. But at the end of the day, you're my audience. So please, uh, if you have an opinion, about how this format could better meet what you want, then uh, please comment below. Let's start a little conversation. This is a this is a team effort to give you guys cool stuff. Anyways, appreciate your time and I'll talk to you next time.